Hey guys, and welcome back. If you are new around here, I cover mostly Australian true crime cases. And today we are covering an unsolved case. And this case has been unsolved for 27 years this September. And it remains one of South Australia's most notorious missing children's cases. If you are from South Australia, please let me know if this is a case that still gets talked about, is a case that is frequently in the news. I'd be very interested to know if it is still getting the coverage it deserves over there. Having said all that, let's get straight into the case of Rihanna Barrow. 12 year old Rihanna Brenderan Barrow lived in the suburb of Morpha Vale in Adelaide, South Australia with her mother Paula and brother Shannon. Her parents were separated and Rihanna had not seen her father, Leon, for several months as he lived on the Gold Coast with his wife, Sandra. October the 7th, 1992 was a Wednesday and as they usually are, it was a day like any other day. However, it was in fact school holidays here in Australia. Rihanna's brother Shannon was on school camp and her mother had work that day, meaning Rihanna would be home alone. Usually Rihanna would visit her father on the Gold Coast during the school holidays. However, these school holidays she had chosen not to, but she did actually have a really great relationship with her father and she even had grandparents that adored her and doted on her and she'd only spoken to her father just a week earlier. Rihanna's mother Paula left for work at 8 30 a.m that morning. She went into her daughter's room and gave her a hug and a kiss goodbye. Rihanna who was listening to one of her favorite songs at the time Love Shack by the B-52s told her mum be quiet I'm listening to my song. Not knowing this would be the last time she would see her mother ever again. As it was the early 1990s, Rihanna participated in what so many other 1990s children took part in and that was having an overseas pen pal. Back before we had the internet and email and mobile phones, we had snail mail. And Rihanna's pen pal was actually from the United States and they'd forged quite the friendship via mail. Rihanna had decided she was gonna buy her pen pal a Christmas card. It was only October, but international snail mail was pretty slow back in the early 90s. So she decided to get an early start on it and go get the Christmas card on that day. Rihanna planned to get the Christmas card by walking down to her local news agency. However, the original plan had actually been for her to catch a bus to the Colonnades Shopping Centre, which was roughly six kilometres or 3.7 miles from her home and meet her mother Paula there. However, Paula heard on the radio that there was actually a bus strike going on at that time. So between Rihanna and her mother Paula, they decided the best and the only option really was for her to walk down to the local news agency. The news agency was about a 1.7 Ks, which I think is about a mile or about a 20 minute walk from Rihanna's home. Where Rihanna lived, which was at 47 Wakefield Avenue in Morfitt Vale, it was a pretty busy suburb. Her street was parallel to a freeway, which alone just made it quite busy. But the fact that it was a quite lively and just a friendly suburban neighborhood suburb made her mother pretty happy for her to walk the short distance to the news agent and I think given the fact it was early 1990s here in Australia we kind of just had more of a air of trust in letting our children walk around our own neighborhood. The news agency was located at the Rainella shopping center now known as Southgate Plaza. At 10 30 a.m that day Rihanna was seen leaving her home by a witness to head to the news agency to get her Christmas card. She was wearing purple shorts, a green t-shirt with the word hypercolor across it, some white socks, some Lynx sneakers and the sneakers had a bright pink tongues. And this is an early 1990s 
child's outfit if I had ever seen one before. She was also wearing a heart-shaped locket necklace, like the one I will have on the screen for you now. Records show that Rihanna bought her pen pals Christmas card at 11.19am 11 11 19 at the news agency before beginning her walk home, where she was seen walking by several witnesses carrying a small paper bag, believed to be of course the Christmas card. She was seen between 12.05 p.m. and 12.30 p.m. cutting through Morpha Vale High School and Stanvik Primary School, presumably on her way home. These sightings were the last that were ever seen of Rihanna Burrow. At 4.10 p.m. that afternoon, Rihanna's mother Paula arrived home and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. The door was locked, the TV was blaring with an afternoon television show, there was a record discarded on the floor, of course the B-52s, and then there was Rihanna's Christmas card that she had bought her pen pal, still wrapped in its plastic, sitting on the table. The Christmas card being there, of course, indicating that Rihanna did make it home from her walk from the news agency. However, Rihanna herself was nowhere in sight and nothing seemed out of place. Therefore, her mother initially thought that wherever Rihanna had gone, she would be back pretty soon. When Rihanna didn't return home within a short period of time, her mother began to panic. She began to phone all of Rihanna's friends and started knocking on the neighbors' doors asking if they had seen Rihanna. And this even included one police officer that lived in their neighborhood. But no one had seen Rihanna that afternoon. Paula had really hoped that maybe Rihanna had gone to visit a friend and lost track of time. But this was incredibly unlike Rihanna, and by 6pm that evening, she filed a missing persons report with the police. She also rang her former husband and Rihanna's dad, Leon, to inform him of the situation, of what was happening. His daughter was missing, and Leon immediately knew he had to be there to help look for his daughter. So by the next morning, Leon and his wife Sandra were in South Australia. It was later confirmed that none of Rihanna's belongings were missing, indicating to police that she wasn't a runaway. But the police never really considered running uh, or never considered Rihanna to be a runaway in the first place, especially after they delved into what type of girl she was. Rihanna was really, she was a good girl, she was a family girl, and she wasn't super adventurous, meaning she wouldn't just leave the house on her own without her mother's permission and not return. She also didn't have anything like a boyfriend or any friends that were a bad influence. There was also no signs of a struggle in Rihanna's home. More details of the afternoon that Rihanna disappeared began to emerge in the days following. At around 4 p.m. on the afternoon that Rihanna disappeared, she was seen by witnesses standing at the junction of David Terrace and Acre Avenue, still in her suburb, suburb of Morphet Vale. And this junction was only about 500 meters or 1640 feet from her home. She was reportedly alone. Her official missing persons report also states that that day, suspicious activities occurred at Acre Avenue, David Terrace, Highway Avenue, and Crittenden Avenue, Moffat Vale, allegedly involving a Victorian registered white Tudor Holden Tirana sedan. A neighbor soon came forward saying they'd seen that this model car on her street, Rihanna's street, Wakefield Ave, in the days before Rihanna's disappearance. And after Rihanna disappeared, she never saw the car again. And she saw the car there on and off in the days before Rihanna's disappearance. Another neighbor came forward saying that she heard a scream that afternoon, but at the time thought nothing of it. Several other witnesses have come forward saying they saw this model car in the Morphet Vale area around the time Rihanna disappeared. Police have since stated that a man whose image I'll put on screen now tried to entice a 13-year-old girl into a white Holden Tirana 
at roughly the same time that Rihanna disappeared. Nothing further regarding the statement or Rihanna's official missing persons report has been clarified by police. Unfortunately, the vehicle mentioned has never been located, nor has the man that was allegedly trying to get a young girl into his car. A reward amount, which initially started at about $100,000, now sits at a million dollars and is still on offer for any information that leads to solving the case of Rihanna Barrow. Despite extensive searches and investigation efforts in the past 26 years, nothing of Rihanna Barrow has ever surfaced. In 2017, police added immunity to the million dollar award, meaning that anyone that comes, th uh, comes forward with information will not be prosecuted. I don't know whether this includes the killer because if they came forward and confessed but because they confessed were not prosecuted, I don't know how that works but immunity is there on top of the million dollar reward at this time. Police have stated they do believe Rihanna is dead but the case is still active and it's still open with investigators still going over witness statements and re-interviewing persons of interest as well as over 200 exhibits being re-examined by forensic officers. Police have stated some persons of interest are of more interest than others but no persons of interest have actually been released to the public. And as police always say in similar situations to this, allegiances change over the years. People's attitudes towards law enforcement change over the years. It's been over 26 years and someone out there could know something and they are now able to come forward. So I believe it is still possible to solve this case. Rihanna's mother Paula has done only a one interview in the last 26 years, which she did in 2015. Paula says that she now does accept that her daughter Rihanna has passed away, but she did continue to live on her house or in her house in Wakefield Avenue for years in the vain hope that her daughter Rihanna may one day return. Paula stated in her interview, it got to the stage where I couldn't stand living there and had to move away. It is just the not knowing because it is just ongoing. Her mother also believes that Rihanna had to have known her killer. She believes that if Rihanna had been taken by a stranger, she would have kicked and screamed and kicked up a massive fuss and someone would have heard or seen this commotion. Paula stated regarding this, I would assume if she was on the street, there would have been someone in the vicinity who would have heard that. My feeling is it was somebody she knew. That's what I can't understand. And as I said, of course, where she lived in Morfitt Vale was a pretty busy and lively suburb. So I don't think someone would be able to abduct a child so quietly, so swiftly. I, I agree with Paula. It, it had to be someone she knew. Her father Leon also believes his daughter Rihanna has passed, stating, I am hoping there will be a resolution, but I seriously doubt it will be in our favor. To be honest, I am convinced she is deceased. It's just a matter of where she is and what happened to her. If Rihanna was alive today, she would be 39 years old. So I don't like to theorize or speculate in these kind of cases, but given the facts, we can assume several theories. We can assume Rihanna definitely arrived back home after her walk to the news agency because her Christmas card she bought her pen pal made it back home, which means really there's several scenarios that could have followed this. She answered the door to someone she knew, she answered the door to a stranger, or she left the house off her own back. And her mother does not believe that Rihanna would leave the house again without asking her permission or at least telling her where she was going. Because Rihanna had told her she was going to the news agency, Rihanna discussed with her mum when and where she was going, if she was going somewhere. So for her to just leave is kind of strange. If she'd answered the door to a stranger and they tried to abduct her, why did no one see or hear anything? Why was there no sign of a struggle? Also, if she was taken by a stranger, why was the house locked up? 
if someone was taking you, you wouldn't be like, hold on, just got to lock up my house. It's just, it makes sense that she opened the door to someone she knew and willingly went with them. I guess it's not out of the question to think a young girl would on school holidays, just make a spur of the moment decision to go visit a friend, which would explain why she was seen at 4 p.m. at a junction that afternoon, unless that wasn't Rihanna. And even if she had been abducted at this junction by a stranger, someone still had to have, or someone should have witnessed or heard a struggle, surely. So did someone that she knew potentially, uh, maybe a parent or who knows, drive past and be like, hey, Rihanna, do you want to lift? I'm just speculating here. There just seems to be a lot of possibilities. There's, we've got almost nothing to work off. Well, the, the investigators and her family have nothing to work off. So all we can do is speculate, which I hate doing. But I just keep going back to the fact that she had to have known this person. But as I've said, we the public don't know who, if any, are persons of interest. I really just wanted to round this case up with a bit of food for thought for you or some of my thoughts on the case, which again, I very rarely will put into an unsolved case, but this case has just got me thinking. Um, I couldn't find anywhere you could go support, donate, follow a page, but Thank you for listening to Rihanna Burrow's story. Of course, keep her family and keep Rihanna in your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts below. I would love to hear them. If you found this interesting, like, comment, subscribe, notifications, all that. Until next time, stay vigilant and stay safe. And I will see you soon.